Hey friends, we're learning C sharp today and we're doing more with strings. Now, to strings. string, even that word already is weird and confusing. Yeah. We, we kind of threw it in there and we said, hello world or hello David, and we said, that's a string in quotes. What's a string? Where is the string? This looks like text. Yeah, exactly. So, so strings are a sequence of characters strung together into uh -huh. a string of characters. Um, so each letter in that Maria, M is a character, but Maria together is a string. And in C-sharp, strings are described in quotes. So those two quotes that surround Maria and Hello World, that denotes the string. Okay. Right. So it's a string of characters. So a character is like a thing, like an A or a B or a C. Right. An atom. An atom. If you must. Okay. And then we right. string it together. Right. Molecules. It's a molecule, right? Yeah. Or a friendship bracelet. That's where right. I've got those little square letters, little, beads, right? little yeah. beads, and I put them onto the thing. So here, hello, David. Now, does the quote, is that a, is that a string too, or is that part of it? It's, you said it That's denotes part, it. Yeah, that denotes the literal, literal string. So those beginning and ending quotes mean this sequence of characters in between those quotes are the string contents, the actual data okay. right, for a string. Now, I notice here that we also said, I'm, I'm assuming that this means Here's a string right. called first friend that equals Maria. Yep. And then that feels like the end of something. Semicolon, right? right? End of a sentence, right? Yeah. Um, so string, you're, you're trying to declare space, right? A variable called first friend. And in that slot, you're going to store the string Maria, mm -hmm. right? The semicolon is a C-sharp way of denoting end of a statement. So we declared string first friend is Maria. And semicolon is like a period, right, for a sentence. Mm -hmm. That's your full stop. OK. Um, yep. This reminds me a little bit of algebra. Even though we're not doing anything with numbers here, we're going to do numbers later, it's like saying x equals, equals 1. Right, exactly. Same, same concept, just different type of data. And when you're doing math and you're learning algebra in school, you're just like, uh, x. We'll make x. <laughs> it's 3. So you just made that up. It doesn't matter that it's called first friend. You right. could have called it f. Could be any name. Any name right. at all. Then, though, you said, hey, console.write line again, my friends are, but then what's going on here? What's this dollar sign? Haha, -ha. this is a feature called string interpolation. 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 That's big, fancy word. Way too complicated it's for very, early videos. very, yeah, it is very complicated. Um, but put simply, it's a way to, to substitute um, literal string text. So, my friends are is mm -hmm. part of the string. And then I want to print the values of first friend and second friend within that string. Mm -hmm. So you could think of it like string concatenation or taking a bunch of strings and putting them all together. So I took my friend is, is my first string, mm -hmm. plus, like you just did, did there, my second, uh, my first friend, plus the and text, plus my second friend. So those two are almost equivalent. And we'll talk about details about why they're different later on. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, string interpolation is a fancy way of saying, I want to concatenate the values of first friend and second friend into a bigger string. Right. So I took those two strings that are atoms, and I made a bigger string from those two strings. Gotcha. That seems like a lot. Let's just break it down as we get towards the end of this, because that's a lot of words. We yep. heard concatenation, concatenation to take two things and put them put next together. to each other, yep. concatenate and then interpolate, which is like interpret. In, yeah. Right? So here we just said, my friend is, that's a string, plus Maria, yep. plus and, and then our second friend, Scott. That, that's kind of tedious. I can look at that and I, I get it. Like line eight makes sense to me, yep. even if I'm just learning a language. But I could imagine myself getting confused and maybe missing a... Yeah missing a quote, and I'm looking at that, and like now there's a squiggly, and I'm stressing out. This is what is that squiggly? Well, this squiggly is telling me, hang on, and's not a thing, syntax error, suddenly I've broken everything, I'm freaking out. That is it telling me I made a mistake. It's like spell check. So C Sharp is one of its strengths is that it's a strongly typed programming language. Unlike you know, JavaScript, for example, that would have been a runtime error. Right? So that error would have happened on .NET point. run with, with a JavaScript-like language. Mm -hmm. But in C Sharp, the compiler tells you at IDE time, at compile time, you get these squiggles, red, 
for you know, um, errors, yellow for warnings, and it tries to tell you about errors before you compile, before you run. Right? That's one of the big advantages of having a language like C Sharp. It's like doing spell check before you turn your homework in. Exactly. I'd much rather know from the computer. I don't want my teacher to tell me that exactly. I made a mistake. You got it. So this is great. So putting this dollar sign here allows me to then refer to my variables, x, y, right. first friend, second friend. Within those curly braces. And that's very friendly to read. So line six makes a lot of sense. Both line six and eight work, but when working with strings, I can totally do line six. That's the modern and the new way to do it. correct. Very this is cool. new modern T-sharp. I like it. All right. Other things that I can do with strim strings is I can trim them. Right. So you can trim off some spaces off the start or the end or both from the, the whole start thing. and the end. Let's do that real quick as we get towards the end here. Let's add some, actually, let's do this. Let's put a bunch of spaces inside of, uh, of Maria. So one useful thing, the spaces outside of quotes don't matter. So you oh, could have that's a great point. string first friend equals space, 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 quote Maria. Those first string, that, this space doesn't matter. Really? Yeah. Does it, can I do this? That's right. Like that would be weird. <laughs> but I can, I can do that, right? Some people like weird. <laughs> okay. So I can do that and it doesn't end until it ends. Correct. Okay, cool. But we're not going to do that. But this is a reminder, and you use the word denotes, that the string is inside, inside of, the quotes. of those two quotes. So right. Maria has some, Air quotes. some leading space That's right. and some trailing space. So over here, is it going to include those? Let's find out. We're going to go to our, our terminal. I'm using a hotkey. I'm saying control, and I'm pushing tilde. The, the tilde button there. I'm going to type in .NET run. And let's see. Look, my friends are space, 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 a lot area. of space, 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 and, and a lot of space. Yep. So if I want to trim that, we can trim that. We can do it a couple ways. I can think of two ways to do this. Okay. I could say first friend. And notice how I start typing, and it's trying to help me. Aha, this is the other big plus of C-sharp, IntelliSense. Okay. So you get completion of variables, of functions, yep. of pretty much everything. Yeah, and you see this in Google Docs and in Microsoft Office yep. when you start typing and they go, you know, and you finish each other's sandwiches. Let me help you. Exactly. <laughs> so I could say first friend equals, I could say something else, or I could say first friend, and then strings have all of these methods, methods. on them. So I'm going to trim. Let's just trim the start of Maria, and I'll put a semicolon there for the end. So you replaced the value that's currently stored in first friend mm -hmm. with the same string, but trimming off the starting white space. Exactly. So I'm expecting to see something like that. Right. So let's prove that. We can go again. I can go back to my command line if I want to and type .NET run here, or I could do that inside of Visual Studio Code, yep. or I could hit Control F5. Here we go. My friends are, and then that space is gone. So let's go back, and let's just change that to trim completely. And we'll say .NET run. There we go. Nice. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing for Scott. Now here's the other way that I could do it. I could say second friend dot trim. Right there in line. So right there, and you said in line. That's right, a great right there word. directly. In this line, all in one line. Yep. This is our variable second friend. We can say dot to call a method. We're going to talk about that when we get to object-oriented programming. And we're going to say trim. And just like the functions that you saw in math where you say like f of x, we're going to say trim. trim. And then the parentheses are there to tell you that I don't have anything else to say. Right. And let's see if that works. .NET run. There we go. So even though nice. we have spaces, we've trimmed those spaces, and we've removed those characters, those extra characters from our string of characters. Very nice. Very cool. We're learning all about strings today as we learn C-sharp.